So let's, uh, <clears throat> all the time when I try to give you a, some report that you get in your package, let's say open uh, a Karen lab, they're collecting, uh, somehow they sneaked in and collect 11 samples, but we allowed only seven samples. I think they allocate two times. Yeah, and there so, were two shifts. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> so what you get, it's your PDF file for MOLS data. We collect the size exposure MOLS data at the same time. And you have also raw data for Astra package here and some very brief report, uh, sex report. This is for uh, samples one to 10. Uh, and you see scattering profiles and crafty plots, some information about your values of durations uh, from the real space I've not calculated your R functions, but I just like try to click on that and put everything click OK. So those values just information for you, but I rather prefer you analyze it on your own as well. And the name, sometimes if I had uh, time or just spare time, I try to also separate the peaks in the size exclusion. Let's just go to an example of, let's say, Karen 5 have uh, two peaks that I remember. Uh, we first look at the moles, uh, size exclusion, moles and UV, and you already see multiple peaks. So it was a good choice to use inside exclusion sucks. I think it's maybe a complexation or complex of something. Uh, and so you see the molecular weight estimates is about 95 uh, kilodalton or 100 kilodalton for the peak one, a little smaller for the peak two. Uh, those are very small molecular weights and I think those are the small peptides that are being collected together. So all that information is available for you and it's in part of the package. What else you have there are the raw data. So the Karen zero, uh, that's the BSA. If you wanna test our beam line and see how the BSA, uh, it's about seven milliliters per mil, about 50 microliters injected. But you have your subdirectories, you have a raw data that you can upload to the scatter. And I will show you how to do that. And also what you get there are the dot files. In this case, I have a peak one and peak two. So I call them, sometimes I call it peak one, peak two. Uh, and what is there also is this kind of Karen uh, 5 SEC data that you can directly put in a scatter. And I will show you how to do it now. So this was just a brief introduction, what you got if you collect more insects. All right, so let's just go and clear this. Uh, in generally, what you can do, you can take your SEC file. Okay, that's in this case this one, and you can directly grab the file and put it in scatter. And so what you see here is the size exclusion sax signal, where every dot is one sax frame integrated intensity. And you already kind of can compare that with your uh, MOLS report that I have it somewhere here too. And to be sure that what we do. Ah, oh, this one. Okay. Oh, and it's very similar. There's some aggregation that you can see here. So we separate aggregations and we have a two peaks and very small two peaks for the peptide or something very small that was probably mixed with something. Anyway, so now we have a problem here. <clears throat> so what we need to do first, we can merge the data and select the best signal for the peak one and peak two. Uh, I would recommend clear the buffer and just select the buffer as close as possible. It's a very low concentration. This is about four to five mix per mil. It's not low enough, but because we have a separated peaks, the concentration in one peak is definitely small uh, relatively than the one peak. And so we select the buffer right here. We would set the buffer. And I like to also have the buffer from the both side, just in case we had a copyrighted pull and we set the buffer. So by hitting the update, 
we subtract uh, this buffer that we are selected here and subtract all of it, uh, subtract uh, frames from the, from the signal uh, from the buffer. So you see the progress here, it's done. And what you can do right now, you look at, my computer's getting slower. And that's what I was worried about. You see, uh oh, uh, trouble. It's CPU time to a little crazy. Anyway, I'll try to do as much as we can. Oops, my computer is going not good, not happy. Okay, so well, let's try to continue. So, <clears throat> if the computer will be working well, but what I want to tell you that from this peak now, we can merge. We don't see anything right now. Okay, let's restart the schedule and try it again. Okay. Uh, putting our SEC file right here. And let's just don't change the buffer and go straight to the. So you see that there are two peaks and a different peak. Uh, peak one have a radio duration about 40 to 42, and the peak behind uh, the radio duration dropped. So we can now merge this size of the peak by just clicking the area that you want to select. And so the scatter have this matrix, and this is basically the similarity between the frames. And so you want to select uh, the more cyan, the better, the red, as you can see indicate the area of merging. You don't want to merge this area because you're going to merge two different scattering profiles. So you want to really just be based on the duration that have a similar the durations or the colors indicate that tell you that the scattering profiles are symmetric, uh, similar in this area. And so by selecting, let's say the peak one, you can call it here, Peak one, uh, and you merge that. What I also prefer after I merge the first one, why not just do the second one too and compare those peaks? Uh, how the second profile looks like, and we can discuss it uh, a little time. Okay, I think it's done. Just we select the second peak. Okay, and go to two. Uh, where the scattering profiles goes, they go to the analysis button. And so you can just look at those scattering profiles right here by clicking lock and plot. We'll open this. Uh, and already you see the different peaks of the different scattering profiles. Uh, for molecular weight, uh, you can compare it that the peak one I was about, if I remember, I was 100 kilodalton. So now you can calculate the molecular weight uh, for that uh, peak one, what is the green one. I like to also just immediately compare just real space. And Greg mentioned that by calculating the raw function, you kind of see how the molecules are different in the different size of solution uh, peaks. And obviously this peak one is the larger molecule you can already see it from the PR function extent, maximum dimension. Uh, so it's very elongated, more elongated, 
and I also recommend you can read all those in a few minutes. Uh, there are different ways to calculate the PR function, but in general, you see the elongation. It's most likely to the binding of the peptide that it's extending the molecule. Where the Dmax for the second peak, I just estimate. So there's still some elongation. And we know it's not aggregation because we saw in our size exclusion, we separate aggregations, uh, uh, but it's still elongated. So it could be some histax, some elongation coming from unfolded regions in the molecule, but obviously you see the complexation in the real space much more nicer than in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a reciprocal space. And it's confirmed that these values what you see here, that very low elongation or, or unfolding happen when you have the complexation. That's the radio duration for both the real space or for the DNA plot and dramatically change. So that's interesting. Maybe that's exactly what you want to confirm with the solution scattering, and that's good enough. You don't need to do any kind of type of shaping or any stuff that you really are keen on, but this is exactly the information that you need. I like also show when I just want to show different complexation or different uh, level of unfolding. Just click here to normalize gravity plot. Be sure that your vignettes are properly calculated. So you see that. It's really difficult because there is some potential unfolding happening. So the way it works, uh, you try to find a linear region. Uh, I would recommend just cut a couple of data from the beginning. But this value needs to be at least 1.5, that is to be multiplied by a limit. So it's relatively flat. It's not perfect, but Maybe need to re emerge that. But then by clicking, when you calculate the linear, uh, calculate the residuation, which is about 41 to 31, which is a huge difference. And by clicking the normalized graphic plot, you get this very important <coughs> information about how this P1, when you think about the compensation, how the molecule is much more unfolded. And you see that shift of the P to the right tell you something about you have a uh, potential unfolding relatively to the P2, which is the small, smaller molecule right next to it, probably on complex state. So that's also very good information about how much flexibility or unfolding you have. Okay, so that was done with this, and we have, uh, we can assure there is no aggregation because it's not running through the size exclusion before we collect the data. Okay. So that was uh, just example, very simple one. Uh, <clears throat> let's uh, bring some much more difficult case. I like to show in Bernstein lab. Can, can I ask you a question before? Yes. This, from, from this, since you're so when you're selecting these uh, different peaks, there mm -hmm. uh, is there any because I mean even at the second peak that you're picking there, mm -hmm. there might be a contribution from from the first one. So there, is there any? Are you doing any peak fitting in there or? No, we don't do peak fitting, but uh, I can show you what you can do if you want to do it. That is a solid and a difficult example, but let's do it. Okay. So, so we call it single bio decomposition. And by selecting all, it, all the region, like I'm doing right now here, then you can say don't average those, but you obtain the frames. Uh, for each uh, frame, you get scattering profile for each frame. And so you say subtract, but you unclick this average. Uh, so you can see that in analysis button. Hopefully my computer will speed up a little bit. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Okay. So you see a bunch of frames across the peak, okay? And so what you do with those frames, uh, uh, you can use so-called uh, single value decomposition or EFA. Mm -hmm. And so I just have an example right here. So I just bring it up. So these are your frames. Okay, this is your peak. And you basically say, 
you select those frames that you just abstract and click uh, plot series. Okay. And so then you have uh, basically what you see here, you'll see in a scatter, just those two peaks. And these are intensity at I zero, therefore it's a little bit more rough. But now you can deconvolute the signal under those two peaks or and see how many components you need for uh, fitting uh, each of those frames under the whole evolution profile. So what we do here, we click here, we right click and so EFA is this E evolution factor analysis that we're using and I like to do it to confirm if there is overlapping or no. Uh, so we say, okay. And so what you've come to you is trade that you kind of define how many values, single values you need to really match that each frame. Uh, and you see you need two. That's a good point. That's what I expected to be two value definition. You go next step. And uh, you need a little help here. So the first value starting here, it's okay. But second is supposed to start here where the green is the background. So it's probably like up a little bit more. He needs some help. Sometimes he's okay. He can just define it like he was kind of okay here, but needs a little more push here. Uh, sorry. But you define where the values for the single value starting um, and where it's ending for each frame. And the answer is right here when you click next. He defined <coughs> what is the best fit. And kind of you see that it's a slightly overlapping. You can also select a different region. You can force him to go over a little bit and you will see how much this fit improve when you say, okay, there's a little bit overlapping. Uh, you can play with that and define a different scattering profiles for, uh, for uh, by, by deconvoluting the entire frame. So you get a better signal to noise indeed, but it's a very kind of, you need to be sure that this, this uh, error fitting for each uh, frame across those two beats uh, is low. So that's somehow more tricky and more advanced, but it's important to do exactly in your case to make this test case. <clears throat> so I will be just say done. What you can do now, you go to the main, and now you have component one, component two. And what we're gonna do, we say save, and just compare with the peak one and peak two, what we just did very simple way in a scatter. And I will see how far you are off. And mm -hmm. according, as you see, those uh, overlapping is very minimal. So I would say there will be not so much going on. I'm still impressed, my computer is still working. Okay. So that was done. Now let's open the scatter again and just upload those two components and compare with our mer simple merging. Uh, okay. Zoom is taking 170 CPU, but there's something wrong with my upgrade in the Mac with the newer system a couple weeks ago since then it's problematic. Anyway, so what you can do now, you have a component one and two and put it to scatter back again. I like to really do scatter most of the work, only this EFA it's useful to do, and it's only possible to do so far in the program called RAW. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why sometimes you see what I'm doing between two programs that can be the same. And Greg mentioned that before. And so now we're comparing. So because they are a little bit differently scaled, I'll show you how this looks like. So these are the components one and two, and this is our simple merging, and now we can do that. Let's uh, focus on the peak one. So this is this guy, and I think this guy. Okay, 
So this is again single value decomposition. This is I think converging, uh, by just scaling it, we're bringing it together. And so what you really want to look at mostly just exactly the entire curve is very similar. I would say identical, but you really need to look closely to the small q region it's right here. And indeed, the peaks are visually overlapping, but from the zero value the composition, that's not a big difference if I select and merge uh, the simple way or do this uh, value decomposition. So it was uh, answering your question properly, right? Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Good questions. Uh, let's uh, just bring a very, just not going through the how to process the data, but just give you an example about what people are collecting. Uh, I got here, uh, okay. And again, somebody, I'm not talking about what proteins are collected, but what, uh, just showing the curves. I think if somebody not feel comfortable showing the curves, but it really don't make sense. We're not gonna say anything about it. Uh, okay, this is a very interesting problem. Uh, Wagner collect different uh, ATP, ADP, MPP, blah, blah, blah. Uh, different uh, homologs of ATP. And he was probably interested in uh, how the scattering profiles are different. And it's also very nice data. So obviously when you click on your SACS uh, report, you already see this. Uh, you can just kind of scale it. The very high quality data, but unfortunately we already kind of see it. Uh, or when you click on a Kratky plot, it's even better to see that all those ATP homologs have no effect on the molecule. Uh, one of the reasons could be because we're running size exclusion. And so he may mix it up ATP only with the sample, but didn't use the buffer uh, that was loaded with the ATP homolog. So it was probably a simple buffer. That could be the reason, uh, or it's really don't have an effect. So for in this case, it's much more difficult process that we studying the ligand interaction for the size exclusion sucks most we really also recommend uh, adding those components in our size exclusion uh, size exclusion uh, buffer i know it's required uh, more material especially when you're working with very highly uh, very expensive uh, compounds then it's more difficult uh, but if the interaction is uh, not in higher affinities between molecule uh, and compound, then you will probably do it and do your software. Well, it's similar to the way you do it in the lab with your side distribution. So that was very simple. Uh, you can go back and so see the same what I just showed now in your SACS report. Another example, uh, Ben Benson lab. He did also some complexation and I think just bring the curves there. I will not go into the processing. How did you get the curve? I think that is good enough. Uh, uh, but just click on the report. And obviously he was interested for some peptide, maybe, or it was super low concentration and uh, sample. Uh, one and two and three. And you already see the differences are very, very minimal. Uh, so now I'll just go onto the curve. Uh, I think the good data has been only for this guy. Yeah, he's okay. So again, I'm really not showing how to process each how to get the merge data to show in the final curve and give you some information where you can explain. Um, this, is, oh, this was probably not right. Okay. Don't have here. Uh, let me see what happened in the item two. So let's just bring it up back and take the 
SDC uh, file uploaded here. Obviously, there was a very low concentration. So we cannot really say something about this, even that I try to extract some information from this key. But uh, the noise to the signal ratio is extremely low. So this curve is not very informative. And when you compare to the sample number one, okay, that's a different way. You see how how much more signal we get when we have a proper concentrations. Uh, and indeed, there was a very nice signal and that we got this curve. Uh, this curve. Yeah. <coughs> and so in this case, I don't know why I just don't have it uh, sample number three here, but just by looking at the just report that I mentioned before, we kind of already see there are minimal differences uh, between the sample uh, one and three versus the sample two is just a low concentration. And you see they're extremely similar and you have a well-folded uh, molecule that the graphic will show you that the maxima is exactly at 1.7. That's a uh, square to two. And then also the other durations are about 12 to 12 from two between sample one and three. So basically you can say it's very identical. That was simple. Uh, that nobody gets left behind. We have a new user here from Oni Lab, and uh, so I would just show us a nice complexation here. And I think there's some time. It's about 12:30. It's going to end up at in 10 minutes. So the last case. I'm sorry we couldn't go through all those that I have listed here, but please, do you have any specific questions? Uh, let me go uh, to O'Neill uh, lab, it's a new user, and we try to support uh, new users. And so I think it is a part A and B complex, uh, form A and B complex. Uh, so I will show you probably O'Neill 3 is a complex, I'm just guessing. Just put it right here. Okay, let me. Let's see if I get right. And we can merge the data right now. That was simple merging. And leaving the parts one and two. And what can be done? And we'll calculate the rough function. So this is on your one. Don't forget the test is on your three. Okay. okay. So that's what's simple. Oh yeah. So you obviously see from uh residue duration where the 25 is the complex right here. Out of RG, so you want to really prove that it's true by clicking on this G, you will see this kind of plot and pretty much straightforward. And just be sure that this one is also right. That's the small molecule, part B, and this is part A. Um, and so, in this case, there is some uh, repulsion, probably not because the size exclusion, but some kind of uh, close to the beam stop. So response for the beginning and it's nice and straightforward and again 25 18 and 23 point three and you have everything is in the report so you can briefly get to take a look on this and see if it's half it's work or not work uh what i will recommend to do before you go calculating the shapes and putting a structure to the fox just look at at your VR function. And you see our current data sets are going to 0 0.45. So we improve, uh, and now again, I need to give the credit to Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, not only did you do a nice report for the moles, but also uh, spend uh, days at the beam line uh, changing the fly to. In the meantime, I was surfing. No, it's not true. Okay. So now we 
That's why I'm cutting the data from the end. Why I'm doing it? Because the pure function, these programs are not suitable for such a large Q range. Even that you have large, uh, higher resolution data, but you really don't need it if you want to calculate the raw function. Now you may use it when you want to see a small change in the structure. Uh, then you may kind of kind of thinking about uh, using those data when using Fox. Please, in the Fox, take the whole data set. But calculating the raw function. Right? So you kind of already have your idea where the D max is. I still didn't change this three default values. And so I changed that for the test. It's about 80, maybe 78. Uh, what about this guy? That's about 63. And what about this guy? It's also about 80. Okay, so what do you see here? Let's put this in a really nice colors. So you obviously kind of start to see, and I know that from the molecular weight from the moles, that you have that this is uh, moles. Where is the moles? Oops, I can do this one. Don't buy math, I'm kidding, I like it, but this is getting... Um, Back in my business, yes, we are. Okay, let's look at the molecular weight. You can go uh, to our PDF reports. Uh, I don't have it here right now, I think so. Anyway, uh, I think was match exactly what was proposed one to one ratio between molecule one and two, and it's about 80 kilodalton is the complex. And this one is 20, and this one is 60. That's what I remember a little bit. So you can scale those PRA function based on the molecular weight that you get from the moles or from the sex. I mean, they need to be same. Uh, so how are we gonna scale that? Just give you a heads up, you can go here. I'm gonna change the colors because I don't like this one. Uh, that's the small part of it. So you can just scale it. There we go. And this one needs to be somewhere in between because it's 60 kilodalton. So you need to be you need to get scaled based on the area under the curve. This is very fast way, but you basically see that the maximal dimension of the complex even change, so it's complex side to side. And what you also see that the smaller molecule, the ligand, or the, the have the two domains from the pure function. And they already maybe that's information that you need. That's it. Uh, and how you make the pure, a nice uh, publication figure, you just change the color a little bit, as Greg mentioned that. Um, and make copy paste, you're done. Uh, and basically that's what you need. Uh, sometimes it's very simple. Okay. I went too fast. I was talking for 15, 20 minutes, and I apologize uh, for that I skipped. I had some cases for Wagner Lab uh, to show also Winters, very interesting uh, uh, partial complexation, uh, and also some complexation for uh, other people too. So using transcription sucks very great. Users are mostly using for complexes or if you have some different organization states, uh, you wanna separate those. So it's worked well, and I'm really glad that the system is very stable. As you can see, we're getting really nice data uh, and using the scatter, and also you can use the data that I'm delivering, that we're delivering uh, in Birch for you. What, why are we doing it? And don't let you do it by yourself. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure that the mice are working properly, uh, uh, and it's take a really not a, such a long time just uh, doing the simple merging. You can redoing it by yourself, especially when you're overlapping peaks. That was a great question. 